Hello everyone, my name is Kenneth Brony and I'm going to be an instructor for this course. So in today's lesson, we are going to learn HTML5 and this is a crash course for absolute beginners. At Cambrotech, we say learn programming, you can do it. So before we start, let me say, this is a crash course for absolute beginners. However, if you have little experience with programming, then we are going to start off on a good note. However, if you don't have or you don't know anything about computer programming, then this is the best place for you. Now, for those of you who might have known some few things about HTML, maybe HTML4, HTML3, or other versions of any markup language, this is also going to be good for you because I'm going to give some detailed explanation of some concepts that is going to enhance your skill moving forward. So the tools and resources that you obviously need in order to take up this course is you need your computer basically you are going to program on your computers and you are definitely going to need a web browser in terms of software so any of these um, options will be okay for you you can get a google chrome web browser mozilla firefox or safari for those of you using mac os then you need a text editor or an id an id is an integrated development environment the options that i will recommend are sublime text you can also use Atom or Visual Studio Code. Or in this exercise, we are going to use Visual Studio Code for our ID and Google Chrome for our web browser. Now, regardless of this, um, if you have Mozilla Firefox, you can still use it. If you have Safari, you can still use it. But then for the purposes of those who are absolute beginners, if you do have these softwares, it is going to help you so that you follow exactly along the line or the path in which I'll be instructing you to. Now, if you don't have any of these softwares and you want to install visual studio code on your computer i have another video i'll link up in the description below so that you watch it and learn how to install visual studio code so now let's jump in so a brief introduction of what html is html stands for hypertext markup language and let me emphasize that html is a markup language which also means html is not a programming language now for programming languages we have let's say java javascript python uh, PHP and other things now programming languages basically you can implement logic using programming languages but in the case of HTML, it's a markup language we are just using it to display or to output things on a web browser and those things are just like paintings that's why it is a markup so it's like you're using a pencil to draw something you are not implementing a logic with that aspect of it okay HTML is the basic building block or the markup used to build all websites. Okay, so at this point, I'll quickly launch Visual Studio Code and we'll start working. So we have Visual Studio Code open for us. So what I normally do when I open VS Code, which I believe is a good practice, is to go to Files, then I'll go to Open New Folder. So once I go to Open New Folder, it's going to take me to my roots directory and I have quite a number of widgets I've been working on then I'm going to create a new folder so I'll click on this button then I'll name this folder website so since I have websites selected I'll click on select folder this window will appear for me I'll close this and it's an empty folder so basically this is where we are for my default settings this folder website has been created in my C drive and this is my C drive. I'll go to users. Then I'll come here. Then it is going to be located somewhere here. I named it website. But we all saw it. So I'll just look through. And as you can see, we have an empty folder website over here. Good. Now, in order to create an HTML file, we need to create it within this folder. So basically, what we are going to do is we are going to hover around this. And you can see that. This is new file. So when we click on this, we are going to create a new file over here. So we call it index.html. Now, if you don't have the extensions that I have installed on my machine, we are not going to see the HTML5 logo as you see it over here. Don't worry. The most important thing is you having .html as your extension. Now, once this is here, when we go back in here, we can see that we have index.html and that's exactly what we created. So over here, what we can do is we can actually double click on this file and it's going to open in our browser. 
so when i expand this you can see that this is a chrome html document so when i double click this this has opened in the browser now when you look at the file path you can see that it's in the c drive users and brony the website folder the name of the file is index.html now this is what under normal circumstance is going to show up in your browser for a website but since we don't have anything over here nothing is showing now we can quickly switch back and let's say we can type this my website we'll save this and if you come back here and come and refresh we are going to see this is my website all right so as far as html is concerned so all that we need to do is to put everything we are trying to represent in the website anything we are trying to build in the html structure so in visual studio code and that's why i use visual studio code a lot because it has intellisense and other things that makes programming very simple for you so you don't need to memorize everything you just need to perhaps memorize or just remember the first maximum two or three letters of what you intend to do and it will auto complete it for you so for instance when you are starting up you need to type ht and you can see it gives me options now you are, since you are dealing with html5 you are going to select html5 and i just use my arrow keys so html5 and i click on enter as you can see this has been generated for us now i'll spend a lot of time explaining each and every aspect of it and what it does but then i'm going to save so Control s and you can see everything has been saved now as far as this content is concerned now we have a doc type html now the doc type html simply means that this is an html file so anything within it or under it is an html now as far as html is concerned every single line of code you write in html must be in a tag one way or the other so then what are the tags the tags are what you see in the angle brackets so for instance this is the angle bracket so anything you see in this angle bracket is some sort of a tag so this is a doc type html this line of code on line one simply indicate that this is an html file so it tells the browser that whenever you are dealing or whenever you are processing this kind of index.html it is an html5 file which you need to take note of now let me quickly switch on to this part of the program now there's a head so as you can see this is a head tag everything is written in tags you can see that this is a head tag is in an angle bracket then we have another head tag over here in an angle bracket but clearly we can see that the difference between the head on line 4 and the head on line 8 is the fact that line 4 just line 4 is just head and line 8 is a four slash head now what that means is this is an opening tag and this is a closing tag so whenever you have the or slash it is a closing tag or it represents a closing tag so clearly we can see that this is a body tag on line 10 this is a body tag and the four slash body is the corresponding closing tag of this body tag so every tag has to be opened and must be closed there are some few exceptions which we are going to look at later on and also we have this closing tag over here remember it's a closing tag because it has a slash at the beginning of it and when we highlight on this this is actually closing the html tag we see over here so now for instance we have the title so what is then the title now let me save this Control s and go back into our browser and refresh remember we have deleted this is my website over there so we are not going to see this is my website so when we refresh this we are not going to see anything over here Look, we are seeing documents over here so what everybody will be asking is where are we getting this document from this document is what we see over here it is the title so remember in website you are going to see some titles over there so this can be let's say home page and we save control s when we come into our browser and refresh see that the title over here changes to home page Good. Now, as far as writing HTML code is concerned, anything we write within the head tag, and you can see this is within the head tag. So the title, for instance, is within the head tag. Anything we write within the head tag don't appear on the website or in the body of the website. 
So basically, this is the body of the website. This entire area is the body of the website. This is at the title bar. And the title is what is showing over here. So anything we write in the head tag, this head tag, do not appear inside the body. If you want to write something that we want to appear in the body of the website, then we need to put it in this body. So basically, you don't have to remember a lot of things. Some of these things makes a lot of sense. So if it is in the body, that will go in the body. So for instance, one of the few things we are going to learn start off is with our headings. So for instance, we have H and like I said, you don't need to type everything. The moment perhaps maybe you type the first two or first three, we are going to see another two complete options which you are going to select from. So we are going to use H1. Visual Studio Code, immediately I type H1 and press enter. It opens and closes it for me. So if you are using any text editor, you are probably going to type H1 yourself and you are also going to close it, type H1 again, which is pretty much going to take a lot of your time. So in this case, as you can see, the moment I type H1, opens and closes it for me. So now, let's type Henbrew Tech. Now when you save this, remember I said this is the body tag. So anything we write or anything we want to appear the body of the website, we put it inside the body tag. So now when we come here and we come and refresh, you can see that we have Henbrew Tech inside the body of the website. If you were very observant, the moment I type H, we had a lot of options over here. So for instance, we have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. For now, we are only dealing with the H or the H1s and H2. So for instance, when we type H2 and do another, do another Cambro Tech and save. Remember, you need to save your work. So I always do Control S to save. Then we'll come into the browser. When you do a refresh, you can see that this was the first one and this now is the second one. Clearly, there's a difference between the two. So as you can see, the H1 tag is a little bit bigger and bolder than the H2. I will come here and here I'm going to show you some keyboard shortcuts. So basically, you want to see H3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate or I'm going to copy and paste. Okay. So instead of just doing Control C, Control V, which works, I have a keyboard shortcut which is the shift and the alt and the down arrow key. So that's what you have over here. So I just have to be on this line. Let me do it again. I just have to be anywhere on the line so I can be inside the line, I can be at the back of the line or I can be in front of the line. All I need to do is I have to place my cursor on any part of the line and I'll do shift alt and the down arrow key and you can see I have this. So I'm going to duplicate this a number of times and I'm going to change this to H3. Now, because I have other extensions, which I'm going to show you very soon, the moment I change the tag, the opening tag, it automatically changes the closing tag for me. If you don't have these extensions, you need to be changing them yourself. Like I said, some of these things increases my productivity and that's why I like using them. And that's just about it. So we have up to H6. So we have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. And these are headings. Okay, so we save this, and when we come and come and refresh, you can see that um, this is H1. It is big, or at least it is bigger than H2, and H2 is bigger than H3. H3 is bigger than H4. H4 is bigger than H5. And the last among them is H6, which looks very tiny. So this is as far as the headings are concerned. You're not going to see H1, H2, H2 all lined up, okay? Maybe what you're going to see is something like this. Let's say you have an H3, you have formation. So I've seen that when we come and refresh, this is information. And under information, you are likely to have a paragraph, okay? So let's see how we can put down a paragraph. And I said, everything in HTML is written in tags. So clearly, there's a tag for paragraphs. And the paragraph tag is a P tag. So you can do P. And when we click on it, it opens and closes it for us. Okay, so this is the opening tag of the paragraph. 
and this is a closing tag of the paragraph how do we know that this is a closing tag of the paragraph because it ends with a slash over here and you can see all the closing tags ends with a slash so we can see that this is first first paragraph to save this and when we come here you can see that this is our first paragraph choose up over here and this is our h3 tag good so these are some basic things now sometimes when you are designing website you would want to uh, kind of put some dummy text in there so that you kind of have a feel of how things are going to look like so in order to put dummy text we are also going to put it in a paragraph form we have the lorem ipsum so you just type lorem and when you just press enter it is going to generate dummy text i'm going to do ctrl s to save and this is a dummy text i was talking about so lorem ipsum dollar it doesn't make sense anyway so we'll come back after saving we come and refresh and this or oh, this is our dummy text we can add a couple more so what i can do is i can do copy paste over here so that the paragraph looks a little bit longer so when you refresh you can see that our paragraph is looking a little bit longer now as far as html5 or html is concerned this is a markup language now look at this we have lorem ipsion dollar sets let's say i want to break it up over here and maybe bring a met whatever whatever down now let me save this now when i come back here come and refresh nothing changes now this is what i wanted to see i wanted to see lorem ipsion dollar sets and this line to come down but then it's not coming down it's not coming down because as far as HTML5 is concerned, it doesn't know anything unless you tell it to do it. So basically what that means is we need to tell it that we need to break that line because as you can see over here, it is on one line and if you want to bring this one down, we need to break this line. So that also comes with a tag and that's a break tag. So the break tag, you just type BR and when you press enter now. You can see that the break tag didn't come with an opening and a closing tag. So the break tag is a typical example of a self-closing tag. So we have two types of tags. You have the normal tags, which comes with an opening and a closing tag. And a typical example is the H3 or any of the H tags or the paragraph tag. Okay, so the paragraph tag has an opening and a closing tag. But then the break tag is a self-closing tag. So when we save this, and come back to refresh you can see that because there's a break tag over here it breaks this line and put it here now let's also try and break the line at this point okay so as you have it over here so Ahmed consider Abdepsin Elit so after Elit I want to break this and put this non sans whatever dummy text under it so this is what I was referring to. We just need to come here, come and put a break tag over here. And once we save, come into our browser and come and refresh. You can see that it is taking effect. So this is basically the header tags. As you can see, this is an information and there's a paragraph that comes with it. Now, do H3. I'm going to do post title. We are going to have a paragraph. We are going to generate dummy text and I'll put a break tag over here. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So, we are going to see a, a post title and a paragraph which is um, a little bit formatted. So, when we see this, you can see that this are title posts. And you can see that um, things look um, a little bit organized okay so another self-closing tag i would want to talk about is the horizontal line now this is how you represent a horizontal line just do hr hr is a horizontal line so we save this and all that we are going to see is that we are going to see a horizontal line across our um, paragraph so when we come back 
refresh that there's a horizontal line across our paragraph. Now, at this point, I would want us to look at a typical website, one that you probably might have visited before, and see some of the things that appears on the website and how we can play around them, see how we can also represent some of these things on our own type of websites that we are trying to learn is. So at this point, I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm going to go to Amazon.com. So we are in Amazon.com. Let's go to, let's say, let's check this product out. This is a projector. And let's click on this particular item. So clearly, you can see that these are all text and these are written in some kind of H1 or H2 or H3 tags. Okay. You can compare it with us. I can see it looks like an H2 tag, as you can see over here, in terms of the weight or the size. Then you can see that there are some few things over here. Now, if your guess is as good as mine, you can see that these are the horizontal tags or the horizontal lines displaying over here. And that's exactly what we are trying to display over here. Now, other tags I would want us to look at is, for instance, you see that we have the list price. And this is $99.99. And it has been cancelled. So how do we have something that you can see that has been strike through or it has been cancelled and there's a simple way of going about it once again we use html tags so for instance you come down here and we can do let's say let's put it in a paragraph okay so in the paragraph tag we can have 99 99 dollars when we save this come um, over here you are going to see somewhere here so when we refresh we are seeing 99.99 dollars as you can see over here we want to strike this out so in order to strike this out now we also need to put this in an html tag so there's a strike html tag so as you can see there's a strike over here and all that we need to do is to put this piece of text in this particular strike tag so when i save this when i come back you can see that tracked out we have on the Amazon websites like this okay so these are basically some of the things you see on a typical website so as you can see on this website we've actually seen how we can put or how we can display a text we have also seen how you can draw a horizontal line which we've also displayed and these are all HTML tags and we can see how or we have seen how we can strike some um, text which we have over here now, as far as the striking of the text is concerned, so let's say this can be an H3 tag, and inside the H3 we will have a strike tag, then inside the strike tag we will have $90. So once we save this and come here, we are going to see that this is looking a little bit bigger in terms of the font size and the font weight as compared to this because this is in a paragraph tag, so it's going to take the default font size of a paragraph this is an h3 tag so it is going to take the default font size of an you can see the differences over. so for instance you can see that as far as this writing is concerned i can clearly see that perhaps maybe this uh, hardware interface and vg and usb hdmi are probably of the same font size but then this is bolding and this is not so then how do we bolden a text a piece of text so in order to build in a piece of text there are actually two ways you can actually use the b tag and the b tag obviously stands for bold so you can put b over here and let me put my name over here so i'll put bruni so all that we are trying to say is we want to have bruni in here but then bruni should be bolding so once we save this come back onto our website we are going to see bruni somewhere here and it has been bolding now let's put my other name Kenneth over here and I'm going to show you the other building tag that we normally use and that's a strong tag so strong and I'm going to put Kenneth over there so we are going to see Kenneth and there's going to be building once again so depending on which one you want to use so as you can see Kenneth building over here depending on which one you want to use you can either choose to use the B which stands for building or you can use a strong tag which is also bold fonts 
all right so basically this is what we are seeing so one of the things you would want to see is maybe how then do you write or how then do you represent 20 raised to the power 4 in html so this is how you go about it let's say we have an h3 and you have you want to write 20 raised to the power 4 so 4 will be on top of 20 and as you can see 4 is going to be a superscript a superscript so we do this and once we do this and we refresh we are going to see that we have 20 to the power 4 now other practical examples is something going to be like co2 for carbon dioxide so for co2 we can have c o and we can have a subscript so as you can see the subscript is su subscript have two so when we save and come here come and refresh you can see that we have co2 for our subscript and you can see it is very interesting one way or the other now the next thing we are going to do is basically to create another html file and see how we are also going to work so let's say we come back into our folder and this is our folder because here we have index.acm and let's click on new and let's name this about.html now about.html obviously we're going to start off with a blank page so we'll do html5 and let's say change this to about then inside the body we we'll do an h3 say about so when we save this when we refresh we are not going to see anything over here but then we can change the url over here and say about dot html we are going to see the about page now this may look a little bit weird okay because we can't be going through website and be changing urls and things like that but then if you go back into our folder and see we can see that we have about over here and when we double click on this see we have the about page and the url says that we are in our c drive we are in the users folder we have ken bruni the website and the file is about.htm and you can see we changed the title to about so that's what you see over here and the title over here is home page all right so now i want to link let me bring this one here i want to link these two pages up and when i say link these two pages up so for instance we come to this place so let me clear this off so that you see very well so this is amazon.com now let's say we go to um, customer service click on this it sends us to a page so this is amazon.com forward slash help forward slash dot dot dot, dot display dot html okay so you can see that this is a path and that's what you want to see over here so this is more or less a replica of it okay this this running on a local computer you don't have this posted on a server so we have this over here I want to link these two up now in order to link pages up we have what we call the anchor tag now this is what i'm going to do now inside our body at the very top of index.html so over here i'm going to type in a i'll press enter and there's href href is actually this is what contains url or url fragment that's the hyperlink points to so this is an hyperlink ref okay reference so what is this pointing to it is actually pointing to about html then we we'll put in a text over here to say about and once we save this we come back to our file and refresh we are going to see about over here and when we click on it it's going to take us to the about page so as you can see changes from let me refresh this once again it changes from index.html to about and this is the about page as we all know all right now the about page we also want to have a link which can also link us back so we can go into the about page and pretty much do the same thing so now let's put this one down here so it puts an a tag and this one will link to index index.html then we can say this is the index text page so when we refresh and see 
text page over here and when we click on this gets back it gets us back to index.html when we click on this it takes us to about page so basically this is how navigation is done we have the anchor tags which links us from one page to the other and you can see the title is also changing as well okay so you come back and probably what you would want to do is to also um give a replica of this so probably i'm going to copy this and um I'm, I'm going to copy this then i'll do about over here i'm also going to about then i'll come back here and i'll do text.html optimize this all right so i come and, come and refresh have the index page when i click on this since i'm on the index page i'll still belong here but when i click on about it takes me to about and over here too when i click on about since i'm on about page it still leaves me here but then when i click on index page it takes me back things like that and basically this is what we see over here when you click on today's deal it takes us to the today's deal page when you go to cards uh, gift cards it takes us to that page and you can see the url will be changing one way or the other so that's basically what you see with regards to um, building basic website all right so one of the things i would also want to talk about as far as anchor tags are concerned to do is i'm going to put an anchor tag over here I'm just going to copy a url so this is amazon.com the entire thing of see i'm coming here paste it within the text i'll say i'll save this when i come back here and come and read you see this over here click to amazon now when i click on this when you take me to the amazon website so now one of the things you can also do as far as this is, is to also say okay well if you click on this i'd want you to still remain on my website because for instance when you click on this it takes us straight to amazon but we don't want it that way we want this to open on a different window okay so basically this is what you need to add text so you are going to say target to underscore blank so when you do target underscore blank all that you are trying to say is that when i click on this click to amazon yes i want to go to amazon but then take me to a different window when we click on this it's going to open it on a different window so that your website will remain where you are back and forth so for instance maybe this is your blog website and you have some advertisers in there you are putting their links over there you don't want to have it in such a way that when they click on the link takes them but then your website still holds so that you can see some few things over here we've learned how to link up pages by using the a tag and yes pages index.html about.html you also saw how to link to an external website which is amazon now we'll come to this particular page and put in some few things over here. So let's put in a paragraph and once again let's do a lorem. But this time around I just to do lorem because lorem maybe we wanted more text. Okay, we wanted more text. So what I'm going to do is instead of just doing lorem, we can do lorem and, and save. You can see that we are generating more text than we used to. So basically this is how we can generate more text so when we save this and come back to our about page you can see that lorem is giving us more text because we specified that we needed 200 words i don't know if there's any way of counting but then there are 200 words all right so now let's come back so it's not just only 200 words we can also have paragraph lorem once yes five words so when we save this you can see this is lorem is one word this is another word two three four five because we specified 
that you wanted five words so that's basically what we have refresh we're going to see uh, something that looks like this we've also done something that looks like this because basically these are all links okay so when you click on this it takes us to a different page that's basically what we did with the links that we are trying to see over here so i'll come back here and onto this product we've actually seen something like this where we can strike through by using the strike tag now we've also seen something like this where this and this are more or less the same font size but then this is bolding so we can use either the b tag or you can see some bullet points over here in order to do that there are two types of listing okay we have ordered list and an ordered list so this is what i mean we have ordered list and an ordered list now before we move on to ordered list and an ordered list there's one basic concept i needed to explain at the very beginning it has to do with commenting now commenting now we comment to actually give some basic descriptions of what you are trying to do so that maybe some few years to come or in some time to come when we come back to the code it becomes readable so for instance let me show you how to put out a comment in HTML. then we'll do an exclamation point mark and i do dash dash and you can see it's auto generated now this is comment and when we save this okay remember this is a comment is appearing under the lorem isium the last five word paragraph over here now when we refresh and it's on the about page so it's supposed to appear here when we refresh and come here it doesn't appear and that's simply because comments are non-executable so what you have over here is not going to be executed but then it's it is going to help us so for instance this is a comment i can just type this So this is the ordered list and uh, and how does it look like so in order to have an ordered list list now when we do ol now after putting out this tag for ol for ordered list then we need to put out the list itself so the list has a tag name li then we can do item one save this now what we can also do is probably duplicate this a couple of times now we can do item two item three four the last one five now when we do this so there's an ordered list these are the list items when we do this and save come come and refresh you can see that this is an ordered list so you can see that there's an order so this is one two three four five an ordered list we are going to see the unordered list so for the unordered list what i'm going to do is i'm also going to put out a comment over there so if the ordered list was ol the on ordered list will be ul ordered list so we can do well tag over here and once again we are going to list the item over here so we are pretty much going to have the same i just want us to see the difference between ordered list and ordered list so when we save this come and refresh remember this is the ordered list so as you can see we had one two three so there's an order in the list now this is an an ordered list there's no order so you can you are just only seeing the bullet points and that's essentially what um is being shown over here as far as this about this item is called so once again we can just have um let's say an h tag about as we see on the website have ordered lists have li let's put some lorem and come around i just want 10 words nine words actually so i'll just do lorem nine have a description the first one or the first point 
the second point i just want to say let's say lorem six the next one just wanna rem rem change just wanna rem lorem ten all right so this is basically what you are doing you want to have an issue tag that reads about this item and these are the descriptions that you are trying to see. this is basically just to mimic what you have over here but in our case you are just using um, dummy tech so when we put this out it is actually um, more or less a replica of what you are trying to implement over here the import of some of these things is i just want you to the next time you look at a website you see some of the things you see on a website and the first thing that should come to mind is like oh, okay this is how to import this thing that i'm seeing and immediately you see the you know that okay there's an on an ordered list now one thing i would want to show you as far as the ordered list is concerned and i'm going to replicate some few things over here an ordered list ol without the list basically this is it now, as far as the ordering is concerned let me refresh you can see that we are still seeing one two three. now let's say we don't see one two three we want to see i i i and i i things like that all that we need to do here is to put out an attribute and which is type so once again if you are using yes code you are going to see these options over here so let's say you want to put out a b c d for this matter small letter a so as far as the ordering is concerned instead of one two three four five six you want to see a b c d things like that so you can see that the ordering changes from one two three to a b c d once again we can choose for the capitalization it's going to be capital a b as you can see over there you can also choose to have i or the roman numerals once we come here that we have the Roman and also opt for the capital letters of the Roman. See, we have the ordered lists. So I've added two images and a video onto our photo over here, and these are so we have image one, we have image two, and we have my video. Now we have image one, image two. Now we should take note of the fact that there are file extensions okay so for instance image one the file extension is jpeg and image two the file extension is png so we keep that in mind the video file extension is mp4 so we also keep that in mind i just typed i am the the image cargo now the src represent the source so where is the source of the image the image is coming from the current folder that we are in now, in order not to confuse yourself normally this is what i do especially when i'm in vs code what i'll do is i type in dots and forward slash and it gives me a drop down so i have this image i want to select so i just select this one so i don't confuse myself now what this means is this dot slash means we want to go into our current folder and grab this image over here and the extension is .png and what this alt actually does is um, it's the alternative to that image so that if the browser don't see the image then that kind of text would display so you put in a text over here so you can see this is you save this and go into our browser and see how things look so when we come here this is our about page when we refresh we are going to see the image play over here now it's quite big of an image so it is pretty much covering a very large area and there's actually a tourist site in ghana so this the kwame nkoma mausoleum and kwame nkoma happens to be a pan-african he was the first president of ghana so what we can do in terms of sizing things up over here put out some kind of attribute and we can do with let's do a width of 500 and this 500 is going to be 500 pixels when we save this and come and refresh you can see that the image has been resized now, as far as the resizing is concerned 
did a width of 500 it took into consideration the width the height but as well specified or explicitly specified the height you can do height you can do a height over here let's do a height of 700 and when we do a height of 700 then it is not going to take that default resolution so you can see that it is the height is a little bit long in terms of 700 and the width still remaining at 500 but normally what i do is i only specify the width so that it automatically adjusts a preferred height for me in terms of what i want so this looks a little bit nice in terms of what we want to see so this is how we add pictures so basically this picture or any picture on a website that you see this is how picture is added there's an image tag as you can see over here the img and there's a source and the source is going to specify the name of the image but then we are going to look at the directory later on i'm going to show you how you can navigate through directories so now let's assume we made a mistake let's say we are typing this and instead of image one the name this is the name of the image we typed image four as you can see there is no image 4 over here or there's no file with the name image 4 over here and when we save this remember i told you about the alt the alt will only display it is an alternative to this image it will only display when this image is not found so this there's nothing like image 4 over here so definitely when we refresh this you are going to see this is the image down over here because there is no image 4 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just go back to image 1 click on save when we refresh we are going to see i would want this to create a folder so we create folder over here for this folder and what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this image to into media so it is asking me are you sure do you want to move image 2 dot png into media i'll say yes so as you can see image 2 is no longer displaying over here it is now in media one of the things we can do to check is over here when we come there's our folder you don't see image 2 in here now there's a media folder when we open media folder there's this image 2 that we put in there so basically this is what i want us to see and sometimes you do some of these things to organize our work so we can have our image now we need a source now like i said i always just try and put out my dots and my four slash and okay i know image 2 is in the media folder so i click on media folder and i click on image 2 so this is actually specifying the path you can see the current folder we need to go into media and we grab image 2 over there and this time around the alternative to the images i say this is And I would also want to specify a width over here so that the picture doesn't become too big. A width of 500. When we save this, see that this was our first image and this is now the second image. Now, what I would want to do is I would want to put out a break tag over here. Remember, we spoke about the break. When we save this, that means it's going to break the line. So as you can see this is playing under it what i can also do is to add another brick brick tag that means I'm going to display it so the the gap over here widens up the second image you see over here this is actually um the cape coast castle um it was a colonial castle a very interesting place to visit when you come to ghana so basically this is how you add images onto the website our website is pretty much taking um, shape in terms of some of the things you want to do okay so now the next question is how then do we add a video onto our website so basically there are two ways I'm, and i'm going to show you all the options available so what we can do is we can have um, a video tag and the source once again do this come and select the video there's actually the video nothing is showing so as you can see the video is too big now what we can do is to also add a width 
and add a width 500 a video uh, pretty much um displaying nice over here what i also want to do is i want to do the break tag over here perhaps a horizontal tag so that things look a little nice okay so this is separating this now this is our video now uh, in order to make this video work we need to add controls so what we do is we need to add another for this now once we do this and save refresh you can see that a video can now start playing click on the actually other things and actually also click on take a picture so basically we can put out this and close this up and increase the volume and actually view from a full this is basically the video we are trying to all right so the control is actually doing the magic over there so this controls pretty much handles everything so the most important thing is we add a video tag the source of the video then these are optional stuff but then it's important sometimes to put out a width over there so that um, everything is put out very nice then the controls now once the controls come then we can see that you nicer over here so one of the things we can also do in terms of building our website is we can also link external video from youtube so all that we need to do as far as getting a video from you you have to go to youtube obviously there's a Cambridge Tech page I'm going to grab one of my videos. I'm going to click on share. I'll click on embed. Now, you can see um, there's an iframe tag over here. A couple of other things. Copy this. Just come and paste it here. Where we want that video to appear. You can see that there's an iframe tag. There's actually an HTML5 tag. There's iframe, there's width, the height for the video, and the source. What you see over here. When you click on save and come back over here, come and read, you can see that the video appears over here. We create right from this particular. As you can see, it's actually linking up the YouTube.